kidney stone patients are never going to go away from our practices. And have you ever encountered those big stones in the calyces or in the kidney? One and a half centimeter, two centimeter stones that the patient does not want to undergo a PCNL. So you have to go up ureteroscopically to dust the stone. And well, guess what? The field gets cloudy and no matter how you irrigate, you can't see. And what I, what I sometimes have to do is I have to terminate the case and then come back another day. I'm here at the 2023 AUA Annual Convention with my rep, Brian, to talk about an innovative product called Calixo. This allows you to finish that ureteroscopic case during the same session and blast and get rid of the stone dust so that you can finish that entire case under one anesthetic. So Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about this product called Calixo? Absolutely. Great to see you again, Dr. Wen. So yeah. thank you so much. So this is our CVAC aspiration catheter. And what we basically do here is it allows a surgeon to target all the different calyces and to you know, possibly have a better stone-free outcome by being able to access all the different calyces and evacuate the dust and fragments after laser lithotripsy. Right, after, so typically when you're dealing with such a large stone, I've already put up an access sheet. I've gone up with a ureteroscope. I've dusted the stone, so I've seen all this debris floating around. I take out the scope. The sheath is still in. Is this where this comes into play? Yes, sir, exactly. So Very good. you leave the 1214 access sheath in place, and then you would obviously advance CVAC through the access sheath up into the kidney to the target location. Now, you can put this up through the access sheath or put a wire up first and then put it over the wire into the access sheet, correct? Yes, sir. So you Excellent. can advance this over an 035 or an 038 guide wire. Very good. So after you drive the scope in, then what happens? So after you drive the scope in, what we oh, basically... after you drive Calixo in, sorry. After you drive Calixo in, so what we do is we remove our atraumatic introducer. Hang on. Let me, let me just show the audience. Let me show you what the introducer is. Introducer here is at the very, very tip. So when you remove it, from the proximal end, this tip goes away. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. So once we remove our atraumatic introducer, we hook up our proximal end here to suction, so just a Neptune or your wall suction. We then have our vacuum control port here, and when the, the port is not covered with your finger, it's just passive suction. When it is covered, you have active suction. Here's our steering control dial. So just by rotating this left or right, we'll actually- Hang on a second, let me show, show everyone who's watching. You can turn that right there. And that will deflect our distal tip then in about 180 degrees. It's similar to how you control a ureteroscope, flexible ureteroscope, except the movement is a little bit different. It's this, you turn this thing right here to drive the tip. And then you can drive this into the different calyces so that you can clear out the dust, if you will, or you can park it in the renal pelvis. So sometimes you may want to introduce a little bit of contrast, right? Exactly. Now, that's the suction port. You control the suction port with this little hole right there to increase or decrease suction. Yes, sir. What is that hole? Opening? So this is our irrigation port. So we utilize on-demand irrigation. So your scrub tech would just irrigate as you are also, you know, vacuuming. So specifically, on-demand irrigation, irrigation means like a... 10 cc syringe. A, very good. Or a, what is what's called a single action pump, right? Single action right? pump syringe, or, correct. Or Iriflow 2, I-R-R-I-F-L-O, Roman numeral 2. I think it was made by ACMI. Basically, a single suction pump so you can irrigate the field. Exactly. And then... So our distal tip here, or just kind of the catheter, is about 70 centimeters in length. And at the very distal end, the distal tip, we have two concentric lumens. So our inner lumen is our vacuum lumen, and that is seven and a half French. And our outer lumen is our irrigation lumen, and that is 11.9 French. Thus, the reason for a 1214 access sheet. It's very intuitive. Irrigation flows out around this outer sheet and then the inner sheet the inner hole is to suck yes sir. so irrigation coming in from the sides and then the inner hole sucks out the dust yes sir and so keep in mind this is being done sort of blind if you will and with our seven and a half french vacuum lumen thus we want to make sure that we're you know getting those fragments down to two millimeters or less 
that way we can evacuate them with their with sea backup. Yeah. Oh, and certainly, that I think this makes it a lot faster to get rid of dust and allows me it will allow me to continue and clear most, if not all, of the stone and leave no residual fragment. There's some debate as to whether or not leaving a little bit of fragment in there can serve as a nidus for future stone formation. So being able to clear most of the stone instead of trying to get the patients to passively pass the fragments is beneficial. Yes, sir. So now I can't talk about the device without talking about coding and billing. For the medical, I say a surgery center or the hospital, mm -hmm. how do they recoup the cost of this particular device? So when CVAC is used in a procedure, CVAC has its own unique C code for a hospital. So a HixPix code, the code is C9761, and that is specific to CVAC to a steerable ureteral catheter. Very good. And from a surgeon's perspective, to bill for your professional component, when appropriate, you want to build the code for ureteroscopy with laser lithotripsy, and that includes stent placement. So you want to build that code. And my, in my mind, I think a modifier 22, when appended to that particular code, is the most, I think, the most appropriate code to use, and not the unlisted code indexed to a bladder irrigation because that introduces a bunch of headaches when it comes to coding and billing. You, not, just starting from the prior authorization issue, also you know it's going to be, well, I guess modified 22, you'll get delay in payment because the payer is going to want additional documentation unless you've done it so well for so long that you no longer will get medical record requests using a modified 22. That does happen. Ask me how I know. So I recommend using the, I think it's 52356, the ureteroscopy with laser lithotripsy and use modifier 22 whenever you do one of these procedures. And I've created numerous videos. It's on YouTube. It's in the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group on how to appropriately use modifier 22. If you did the extra work, and any time I think you put one of these in, you most likely are doing extra work. So you may want to consider using modifier 22. Make sure you know how to document so that you can collect on things that you already did. And you're not cheating the system, you're simply coding and charging for things, for work that you already do. All right, so Brian, anything else? Nope, it's actually, you know, pretty simple, really intuitive, and so it's, uh, and it's available. So we're at Calixo Inc. and the um, Calixo Incorporated, and the device is called CVAC, so just C-V-A-C. Makes sense. All right, Sir. thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Great seeing you. And as usual, any comments or questions, leave them below. Look forward to seeing everyone. Bye-bye.